everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the Crochet Class Cow. This is a wonderful project if you're just starting out with crochet or if you just need to kind of brush up on your crochet stitches. Uh, this is worked in panels or sections of really basic stitches. And if you've never crocheted or you're just kind of starting out and looking for uh, one of your first projects or just kind of coming back to crochet, we're going to go through each stitch together uh, in detail so that you can see how to do each part of this cowl. Now there are uh, three sections and they re just keep repeating. So there's a, a section of single crochet here. There is a section of double crochet, and then there's a section of treble crochet. So you can really get a feel uh, for each basic stitch used. And these are uh, stitches that you'll see a lot in crochet projects. The finished cowl has a circumference of 36 inches. Now it's crocheted, we're going to be crocheting it in a strip and then seaming the edges together at the end and I'm going to show you how to do all that. I'm going to sh actually show you two ways to seam. We're going to whip stitch or just kind of sew it together, uh, but I'll also show you how to crochet it together as well. So the finished width is about five inches give or take. Now because of the, I'm sorry, 5.5 inches, because of the nature of the stitches, as you can see, single crochet has a, a much tighter uh, fabric that it produces, whereas treble crochet up here is a much more loose, open fabric. So you might get a little bit of variation in width, and that's perfectly normal. It's just the nature of the stitches, but it's roughly 5.5 inches wide. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a six millimeter J crochet hook, a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and your yarn. So I have two versions of the cow here. Now I used, for this green one here, if you want to make this version, I used two balls of uh, Vanna's Choice, and this is the Kelly Green, in case you're wondering. So two balls of Vanna's Choice. I also have another one here. This is the... Uh, Karen Simply Soft, and I used one skein of that for this one. So depending on what yarn you have or what you want to use, now you can see with the Karen, uh, it's a little bit of a uh, finer yarn. So it's it yields a little bit of a narrower cowl. But um, either one you want to use is fine. So one skein of Karen Simply Soft or two skeins of Vanna's Choice. And... Um, you know, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so to get started, and just as a side note, I'm using Vanna's Choice in the barley colorway um, for this tutorial. Uh, it's a nice kind of tweedy um, color, nice and neutral. Okay, so what we want to do to begin is to make our uh, starting chain. So what we're going to do to begin is put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up that loop, and tighten. Now, if you're just starting out with crochet, if you need to uh, pause uh, and, and take some time or go back and rewatch, definitely feel free to do that until you uh, master the stitch or the technique I'll be showing. So for our starting chain, uh, we're going to make 16 chains. So to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me just get some more yarn. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So here is our starting chain. Now a lot of times when you're starting off with crochet, your starting chain can um, be a little bit tight. So if you're having trouble and your, your starting chain is too tight, just go up a hook size just for the starting chain part only and then you can later go back down to the J hook for the remainder of your project. Um, that's just a little tip if you're having trouble with the tightness of your, your starting chain. 
Okay, so we're going to begin our first panel. Now let me grab one of these cowls to just kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So like I mentioned before, our cowl has different panels. So we have our single crochet panel, a double crochet, and a treble crochet. So we're going to go in order of stitch size. So we're going to go single, double, then triple. So I'm going to show you how to do the single crochet section, then the double crochet section, then the treble crochet section, and then to finish your piece you'll just repeat those a few more times until you get the uh, length, uh, the 36 inch length, or if you want to make it longer, if you want to make it like a big infinity scarf, that's okay too. Okay, so what we're going to do is begin the first section, the single crochet section. So we have our starting chain. So now in the second chain from your hook, we're going to work a single crochet. So this loop here never counts. So we're going to count two chains, one, two. So in that chain there, we're going to work our first single crochet. So to make a single crochet, insert the hook into the chain. Now bring up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. Okay, that's a single crochet stitch. Now let's do that again. Insert the hook into the, we're going to be doing this all the way across actually. So let's do the next one. Insert the hook into the next chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. We're just going to be doing this all the way across. And you'll get lots of practice for each of these three stitches that we'll be learning as you work through your cow. Okay? So once again, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. We're just doing this all the way across for this whole row. So you'll spend a good bit of time mastering and working on each stitch as you work. Okay, just work a single crochet stitch all the way across. Now if you want to just work on this stitch, and master this stitch. I also have a separate video on the single crochet stitch as well. Okay, and then in the very last chain. Now we're not going to worry about this uh, end here until we're finished. We're just going to leave that end alone for now. Okay, so this is our, our uh, first row or foundation row of our pattern. Okay, so to transition into the next row, now as you can see the single crochet panel is about um, six inches or so long. So we're going to work on that for a while, but to transition to the next row, which is also single crochet, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Then we're going to work a single crochet into the first stitch. So you, to find the stitches, if you're uh, beginning, that's uh, these loops up here. So if you look at it from the top, it looks like a V. So you'll find those holes at the top. Okay? So insert your hook into that first stitch and do the same thing. Bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Let's do that again. Insert the hook into the stitch, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. We're just going to be doing this all the way across until we get, oops, until we get to the end of our row. Same thing we did before, but instead of working into the chains, we're working into the stitches as we go. Okay, we're just doing this all the way across. Get some more yarn. We're cruising through the yarn pretty quickly. And this um, Vanna's Choice yarn is a really good yarn for beginners as well because it has a nice smooth ply. It's easy to see the stitches. It's a good um, kind of go-to yarn. Okay, so I just worked it in that last stitch as well. And then we have our next row complete. Now, you'll just want to repeat the row that we just did over and over until this section is six inches from where you started. Okay, so we're going to act as if we did our six inches of single crochet and we're going to move on to the next section or panel two as it's written in the pattern. Um, this is the double crochet section. So what we're going to do is chain two. One and two 
and turn our work. Now we're going to work a double crochet into the first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the stitch, bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay? So let's do that again. Wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the stitch, and bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So we're just going to work a double crochet in each stitch all the way across. And whoops, all the way across to the end of our row. Okay, so just continue to work those double crochet. Now as you crochet more and more, you'll um, get faster. Uh, but when you're working in the beginning, I wouldn't worry so much about speed. I would just focus on the accuracy of your stitches. So let's continue across the row and then we'll move on to our treble crochet section. Okay, we're just working our double crochets all the way across. And also in that turning chain space as well. Okay, so that is how you create the double crochet section. Now you're going to work on that for six inches, the same thing as we did with the uh, single crochet section. So if you can see up here, the double crochet section. Okay, so do that section for six inches. Now let's work on section three or panel three, the treble crochet section. Okay, so what we're going to do is chain three this time, one, two, three, and turn our work. Then we're going to work a treble crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch across. So to do a treble crochet, we're going to wrap the yarn around the hook two times. So one and two, and then insert the hook into the first stitch and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So as you can see, as we're working the single, double, and treble, the stitches are getting increasingly taller. So this is going to be our tallest stitch. Next, we'll just do this all the way across. So wrap the yarn around the hook two times. Now I'm using a, kind of a tweedy yarn, so I have like these little fibers sticking out. Um, this one was just the, the solid, so if you feel more comfortable without all these little fibers, um, you might feel more comfortable using the, the solid color yarn, just as a side note. Okay, so insert your hook into the stitch. Now we wrap the yarn around hook twice. Insert the hook into the stitch, bring up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Let's do a couple more of those. Yarn around hook twice, first two loops, next two loops, last two loops. We're just going to do this all the way across. And again, in the beginning, just focus on the accuracy of creating the stitch and the speed of your stitches will come. It'll just happen naturally the more you practice. And I bet that once you are a couple rows in, you'll feel uh, more quicker and confident uh, making these stitches if you've never made the stitches before. Okay, so what we're going to do is I wanted to redo that stitch. If you make a stitch and you're not crazy about the way it looks, simply back up a little bit and then keep going. Okay, so we're just making our treble crochets in each stitch all the way across. Yarn around hook twice, insert it into the stitch, bring up a loop. Yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Yarn around hook, last two loops. OK, 
okay, all the way across. Now you'll find, because these stitches are so tall, you'll um, breeze right through the treble crochet section of your cow. And I also wanted to mention, if you don't want to do six inches of each section, that I really just designed it that way so you can practice, so you can really make a lot of single crochets, a lot of double crochets, and a lot of treble crochets. But if you want to, I'm going to just zoom in a hair, there we go. If you want to just do a row of each, that's fine too. If you, if you need a little bit more variety, it's your uh, kind of crochet primer. So if you feel more comfortable doing it, either way is fine. Now we have our last stitch. And then you can just work your last uh, treble in that turning chain space. Okay, so then you'll work the treble crochet section for six inches or desired height. You know, if you want to just do a few rows of that, it's totally up to you. This is a very, very flexible pattern. It's just designed to help you practice stitches, okay? So we have each section done. Now yours, of course, will be much bigger because you've worked uh, several inches of each stitch. So then what we're ready to do is finish off. So I'm going to finish off this little kind of sampler that we made, and then I'm going to show you how to seam these cowls. We're going to seam them in two different ways. So cut the yarn, go ahead and fasten off. Now if you're going to crochet your edges together, don't fasten off yet. But if you want to seam them together with the whip stitch, you can go ahead and cut the yarn. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the whip stitch first, and then I'll show you how to crochet them together as well. Okay, so let's move on to seaming. Okay, so once we're ready to seam, we can get the cowl, and I worked on mine until it was about 36 inches. You can make yours a little bit smaller if you want it to hug the neck more. You can make it nice and long if you want an infinity scarf and wrap it, you know, a couple times around your neck. Or you can even leave it unseamed and make it a little bit longer for a lovely, easy scarf. It's totally up to you. I'm going to show you how to whip stitch seam. It's a really easy way. You're just basically sewing the edges together. Okay? So what we want to do is sandwich the edges and make them as uh, lined up and nice and neat as you can. Now it helps, not necessary, but it helps to both begin on a single crochet panel and end on a single crochet panel so they line up nicely. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this. Now what I'm going to do is now normally we would seam it with the same color yarn so it blends and is hidden and as invisible as possible. I'm going to use the barley yarn just for learning purposes so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so take a, now we've fastened off and we've woven in our ends. Now what I'm going to do is take, oh, about, I don't know, 24 inches of yarn or so. It's better to have a little bit too much than not enough. And what we're going to do is just grab your tapestry needle and thread. Now you don't want a needle that's too tiny because you're going to have trouble getting the yarn through the eye of the needle. So we've lined up, we've kind of sandwiched our edges together. Now you're going to start over here in the corner, like this, and just pull it through. Now what I like to do is leave a little tail, and right away you can just tie a knot. And you'll weave this end in at the end. Okay. Now the cowl that we've created is reversible. So it doesn't matter, there isn't an inside or an outside at this point. You can sandwich it however you like. Okay, so we have these edges sandwiched together. They're nice and lined up. Now when you seam to get it nice and neat, each layer of your sandwich, so this top layer, you can see these little V's at the top. You want to go in both loops like that. And then you want to go in both loops of the other layer of your sandwich and just pull it through. Now again, I probably gave myself a little bit too much yarn, but um, I'd rather have too much yarn than not enough. I mean, you don't want to have like three feet of yarn because it'll take you forever to sew, to pull all that yarn through as you work. But um, 20 inches should be more than enough, okay? So we're just going into both layers, both Vs, all the way across. And the whip stitch seam makes a nice, I mean, obviously it's not going to be invisible because we're using brown yarn with a green cowl. But if you're using the green yarn with your green cow or whatever color you're using, it 
it's going to give you a nice flat um, pretty invisible seam. Now some people, uh, this is why I'm going to give you two options. Some people really, really, really do not like to seam. They do not like to sew uh, or use the needle in this way. Uh, so I'm also going to show you how to crochet it together. But this is a pretty quick and easy way to uh, join two pieces of crochet together. So we're just seaming all the way across both layers. We're going into both of those V's all the way across. And this is going to look really nice when it's finished. I personally don't mind whip stitching. It's um, fairly relaxing, but some people really don't like it. So I'm going to show you both ways. And if you've never done either, I would definitely encourage you to try both and see what you like best. Both the act of doing it, but also the finished uh, look. Because when we crochet it together, it will leave a tiny ridge where the whip stitch doesn't necessarily uh, do that. Okay, so we're just coming up to the edge. Just get it nice and neat. Now you don't want to rush through your finished work either. You've spent all this time making this lovely cow. You want it to um, be nice and neat looking and not ruin, if you will, all the hard work that you've put into the piece. Okay, so this is our last stitch. Now what I like to do is pull it through almost all the way so you have a loop. Now send your needle through this loop and it'll make a nice knot without having to undo the yarn. And then I always like to uh, do another knot. Um, it's just a personal preference. I like my, when you're wearing a piece, um, whoops, when you're wearing a piece, you want it to be uh, very secure and not come apart because it's gonna get a little bit more uh, wear and tear than a placemat, for example. Okay, so I have my uh, my whip stitch is done. So when you're finished, you can cut any excess off because you don't need all that anymore. And just thread your tapestry needle. Now again, you would want to use the green yarn for this, but you're going to just, it's not going to blend as well because I'm using brown, but you're just going to send it in one direction, just like this. And of course the green would blend better. So come in one direction, come back in the other direction. That'll help to lock that end in place when you come back in the other direction. Okay, so you're just going to trim that off and then you'll do the same for the other side. Now this, um, as you can see, it lays nice and flat. So it's still fairly reversible. And then when you flip it over, now just imagine if this was in green. I just wanted to do it in brown, you know, obviously, so you can see it. But imagine if that was in green, it would be pretty much invisible. It would just kind of blend in. And I'm not sure how much you can see on camera, but it's very, very nice and flat. Um, and in green, it would be invisible, okay? So that is how you do the whip stitch. Now, if you wanna give your cow a little bit of uh, texture, like I, like I didn't do, <laughs> I did a tube. If you wanna give your cow a little bit of a texture or like a Mobius look, Give it a twist before you seam. And um, I can show you on the next cow how to do that as well. This is just kind of a tube for right now. So next we're gonna move on how to, to how to uh, crochet your edges together. This was the whip stitch, okay? Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed the other cow. Now, when you're uh, seaming your cow uh, by crocheting it together, you can either use the slip stitch or the single crochet stitch. The slip stitch, will create a little bit of a smaller ridge and the single crochet a seam will create a little bit of a bigger ridge. So it's totally up to you. Either stitch you want. And you can even experiment a little bit, maybe come halfway in with the slip stitch, the rest of the way with the single crochet stitch, see what you like better. And then you can like kind of pull it back apart and, and select one. So anyway, we are on the last stitch of our cow. Now we did the whip stitch in the green and then this orchid color one we're going to do this way. So you're going to work your last stitch, but don't fasten off. And then what you're going to do is sandwich the two pieces together and line everything up nice and neat. Now, what I like to do is chain one and then turn everything. Now I have just a little 
a bit of yarn, plenty to seam mine up with, okay? So I'm just gonna line these together and then get your yarn. And then what you're gonna do is just the same thing we did with the whip stitch, but with your hook. So go in the bottom layer in both loops. Whoops, there we go. And then the other layer in both loops. Now I'm gonna show you the slip stitch and then I'll show you the single crochet. It's the same thing, you're just, but you're just using a different stitch to hold it together. So wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through all the layers, both layers. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And that is the uh, slip stitch seam. So let's do that one more time. Insert the hook into the first layer, insert the hook into the bottom layer, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all the layers, and then bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Both layers, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the layers, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And then you're just gonna do this all the way across. So I'm gonna show you this slip stitch, how it looks in its completion first, and then I'll show you how the single crochet looks. And so that way you can compare, and hopefully select the one that you like the best. So go through both layers. I'm gonna continue across, and then when we get to the end uh, of our seaming, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're at the end here. We're just going through, again, through both layers. Bring it back through, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Okay, so let's lay this flat because I wanna show you, I'll move my hook out of the way. You can see it produces a little bit of a ridge, okay? Not too dramatic. This, again, this is the slip stitch. So a little bit of a ridge, and then on the other side, it lays a little bit flatter. So let's take our hook out, and we're gonna pull this out. And then I'm gonna show you the single crochet seam, and that way you can compare the difference. Okay, so I pulled it apart. We're gonna do the same thing. So go in one layer, the next layer, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both layers. Now wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. So that's the single crochet seam. Now, like I said before, this is gonna produce a little bit more of a ridge. Uh, so if that doesn't bother you, go for it. Some people even kind of work it as a decorative element of a design or project they're working on, okay? So just whatever you like to do, whatever is most enjoyable even to work on, okay? So again, we're just going through both layers, wrap yarn around hook, and bring it through both loops all the way across. Both layers, Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. The thing that's nice too about either slip stitch seaming or single crochet seaming is that you don't have to really stop when you're crocheting your project. It's, uh, you don't have to cut the yarn, you don't have to fasten off or do anything additional. You just basically keep crocheting until everything is joined together. Okay, so I'm at the very end here, and there is the last layer. Now, either with the slip stitch seam or the single crochet seam, when you're done, just cut the yarn and fasten off, just like that. Make sure your knot is nice and secure. Now, let me lay this flat for you to see. Now, like I mentioned before, because of the stitches that we're using, the width can change a little bit. So that's perfectly normal. See how the, the treble crochet panel here is looking a little wider than the single. That's the nature of the stitches because they're different stitches. But you can see the ridge is a little bit more pronounced, but it's still a super easy way to seam things. Now, if we flip it, it's still nice and flat, very invisible looking. So it's totally up to you. So you can either slip stitch, uh, seam it, single crochet seam it, or like we did on the green piece, whip stitch it, okay? So we are all finished. Our cowls look fabulous, and it's a great way to learn some basic stitches or to jump back into crocheting 
perhaps um, again. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.